stick with me and I'm going to talk about how to reverse Alzheimer's and dementia. Thanks for joining me. My name is Dr. Taryn P. Lupo and thanks for joining us on Lupo TV. Now I normally run a variety channel and I usually don't talk much about health topics but I am a trained chiropractor. I am working on my diplomate in clinical nutrition which means I've spent a lot of time studying how the body works. I'm going to explain some stuff today that you might not have heard or strung together all these pieces in the same place. Hopefully this will help you out. I again I know you're looking at me and you're like, you know, the guy has <laughs> like Christmas lights and glitter in the background because normally I do kind of a lighthearted show. Um, uh, all, although we do a variety of topics, they always have a positive, uplifting message. And this will also be positive and uplifting because I want to give you hope. There is hope on some of these fronts. Now, to understand Alzheimer's, you're going to have to understand really why it's happening and... Um, I'm going to break it down and simplify it because I feel that science has made this so complicated that it loses the average Joe and they just kind of go along with whatever their doctor tells them without really understanding the basic functions of the body. So first, before we really dive into this, because I am going to share some stuff and at the end I'm going to talk about some stuff you probably never heard before that might help. Uh, I have been around a long time and I rarely hear people talk about it. So, but the first part, part you probably might have heard, um, but I'm going to explain it a little better. So, here's a shot from Wikipedia and I'm going to start here because you have to understand each cell needs nutrients and pretty much all cells work like this. What happens is you will have nourishment that comes in from the cells, uh, these vessels, and they drain out into the interstitial space to the cells. And then what happens is the cells eat, they metabolize, they poop, and they then excrete all that waste and it gets picked up and it gets put out in these green stuff here, the lymphatic system. And the lymphatic is your sewer system of your body. It takes it out. So, all cells need this to happen, where it gets nutrients, and most of the time, those nutrients are an alkaline solution, and then the cell eats, and it creates trash, which is an acidic solution, and you'll hear it referred to as acidosis. It's kind of just like um, protein particles, and salts, and chemicals, and all the trash that comes out. And that gets to the lymph, and then the lymph eventually brings it to the kidneys. Here's a little better look of the lymph system. And the lymph then picks up the garbage and the trash, and it takes it through the body. And what happens is they collect in some lymph nodes, which you guys probably know about. But eventually, where they do most of their cleaning is the kidneys and the bladder. So they collect there. They dump the lymph into the kidneys and bladder, and the, the kidneys do their best job to clean it up and get it out. So most of your trash you excrete through urine. If that system gets overwhelmed, then what happens is the rest of the body has to also pick up and start dumping trash. So it'll come out through the intestines, it'll come out through the skin, like skin rashes and stuff. And it'll even, um, in some form, your lungs uh, will push out gases. Um, so you try to excrete all over the system when the kidneys get overwhelmed. And when they finally get overwhelmed and it gets too chronic, so what happens when it gets too chronic is that you start getting huge pockets of this interstitial trash liquid that is... Uh, lymph that's kind of spilling out everywhere and this is where you get the kind of jiggly fat and the cellulite and you know the love handles around the kidneys because they can't handle the filtration and it, that kind of obesity where it is like watery weight that is lymph fluid that your kidneys and bladder just can't seem to keep up with 
So what's all this got to do with dementia and Alzheimer's in the brain? Well, all cells work the same way, right? So we talked about this, but the brain's kind of a little different. And let me show you that so you understand. So the brain cells are a little different. They kind of do their own thing where they are protected by a brain barrier that, you know, your brain doesn't want uh, anything to cross that barrier that can damage it. So the way it gets its nutrients is through the cerebral spinal fluid, the CSF. Now, here's a picture of it coming, coming in, and you can get a little better look at what it looks like. And this fluid bathes the brain in nutrition. And what was thought for a long time was that this fluid would then pick up the trash and dump it out. But there was a problem with this theory. And the scientists, they kind of conveniently overlooked it because there was just no really good way to um, explain this away. So remember how I was talking about how nourishing fluids usually alkaline and waste fluids usually acid. Well, everywhere else in the body has two pipes. They have a pipe that brings, you know, alkaline nourishment. They have, you know, these vessels. And then they have a separate pipe that drains it, the lymphatic system. They have to stay apart. Um, think of it this way. It's kind of like your toilet, where the toilet has fresh water that comes in and the wastewater goes out a different pipe. Well, in the brain, for a long time it was thought, well, you know what, we're not sure how the lymph works in the brain really, so it just all must be in the same pipe. But that doesn't make sense. That would be like saying your toilet works on the same pipe, you know, like you would just keep recycling dirty water. You know, you, you wouldn't be clearing stuff. So they knew that was kind of wrong, and they kind of knew also that the lymph does escape the brain um, because people would get like parasites that would block the lymphatic flow and, you know, they would get elephantitis of the brain and all kinds of stuff. So they knew that the lymph wasn't getting out of the brain, but they weren't exactly sure. They just lumped it into the CSF. Well, along comes something later on that the scientists, these Dutch scientists come out and they, they talk about the glymphatic system. So I'm going to show you what that is. All right, so the glymphatic system, and here's kind of a write-up on Wikipedia about it. So the glymphatic system is kind of an interesting thing. The glymphatic system is basically saying that the glial cells in the brain create these pathways that act as lymph pathways and push the lymph out. So around 2012, some... Dutch guys, I forgot who they are, but they 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 rename this system the glymphatic system because it runs through glial cells mainly. Remember what I talked about earlier, where I said that uh, with the brain that it needs to dump its own trash too. So there's certain things that uh, stop that trash dumping, that lymphatic flow. And how this relates to Alzheimer's is there is something that has uh, some problems with this. And I'm, I'm going to explain these tau tangles and how this, this works with the lymphatic system. So here's a picture of these tau molecules. And what happens is you got these healthy neurons... And as these nerve cells break down, there's these little stabilizing proteins that hold these things together, these linkage proteins. And as these cells get damaged and start falling apart, these linkage proteins um, have an affinity for each other and they start clumping up. Think of it kind of like strands of hair on your drain where they just turn to big clumps and tangles. These tangles of tau proteins. And they really... Uh, feel like that if you accumulate too many of these things that that is when you start having a uh, full-blown Alzheimer's symptoms now let's go back and talk for a minute about 
the trash in your brain. How does the trash get out? How does these, because these proteins, this is trash. It's breakdown. Your body needs to get it out. Your brain needs to get it out of its system, but it's stuck. What happens is when the brain gets in an inflammatory process, this breakdown starts happening a lot. You start killing brain cells and they start falling apart. You will hear people say that, uh, well, Alzheimer's is also called diabetes 3. You know how they have type 1, type 2? Well, they're calling Alzheimer's diabetes 3. Now, the reason, although I don't think diabetes necessarily causes this, I think it's more of an inflammation issue. But diabetes is brutally inflammatory to your entire system. The reason diabetics die terribly and they seem to get everything under the sun is because they have chronic inflammation. Unchecked sugar levels um, raise that cytokine level and put you in a state of chronic inflammation that you can't really escape unless you change your lifestyle and diet. We're going to talk about that. The inflammation is the real problem. And this kind of goes with most brain issues, okay? In my experience, you might have a propensity to, to have an area of your brain that is weaker. So maybe you genetically inherited something. Maybe you got a lot of concussions as a kid. Maybe you got vaccines. Maybe you got you drugged up too much or you work around chemicals. You know, there's, there's a big link to uh, aluminum. Uh, aluminum seems to set up in a certain area of the brain that uh, they keep finding a high correlation in Alzheimer patients. So I think maybe the aluminum weakens that area of the brain. But what really makes Alzheimer's express itself is the inflammation. The inflammation is the major player that breaks things down and, and gives you those typical... Um, gives you that uh, Alzheimer's presentation. In other words, you know how people, if you've ever been around Alzheimer's, they will tell you that they have sundowning or they have good days and bad days. So why do these patients, if their neurons are falling apart, and they're having all these tangles, why do they have good and bad days? Well, if you really trace it back and you do, like I used to do this with some patients where I would make them do a, 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 diet, a, a diet journal, a diary, and you would see like 12 hours after they ate inflammatory food that they would have a bad day. And then the days they didn't eat much, they'd have a good day. Oh, grandpa, he's on his game today. He remembers who I am. And then, you know, of course, like, <laughs> God, nursing home food is, is like one step above prison food. Uh, everything they serve them there is inflammatory. It's just, they just keep these these poor people in an inflammatory state most of the time. Now, there are a few nursing homes that are, are different, but the majority of them, no. It's, it's not good food. So eating that stuff, eating inflammatory food, um, if you keep a diary, you will see them their brain inflame a few hours later, and they will have a bad day and not know who they are. And then as that inflammation kind of comes down, They'll be okay until you feed them again. And, you know, a typical diet, uh, God, is like, um, you know, what's at a nursing home? They get bacon, egg, and, you know, cheese omelet, and then uh, toast, and then lunch is like, oh, gosh, I don't know, mac and cheese and a cheeseburger or something. And dinner is, you know, like... Uh, steak and cheesy potatoes and like dairy, 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 meat, 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 oil, oil, oil. All these things that are inflammatory and create acidosis. Um, and then they, you know, top it off with yogurt and ice cream or whatever. So it's just nonstop inflammation that you are eating. You're eating things that inflame your brain. And that causes this breakdown of the towels, the towel fibers, and it causes them to clump together. And when you really accelerate this, it creates um, a traffic jam that it can't clear the lymph out. So the lymph gets all clogged with these particles. Your trash can't get out of your brain, which creates more inflammation. And it creates the brain not to work right. It disrupts the neurotransmitters and the, the firing just doesn't work well. 
and it gets worse and worse as there's more and more destruction. Now, can you reverse it? Um, yes and no. And let me explain that a little better. Yes, there are certain stages, the beginning stages, if you catch it early enough, they're showing in the research you can reverse it. Um, after a certain stage, there's so much damage it's not really reversible, but you can have many more good days than bad. So you can you can calm down the effects. Um, anecdotally, I have no actual evidence, but there's some doctors I do know that I've talked to that said they have reversed the late stages. So there is always hope, but I can't say that's really kind of what what's out there right now. Also, I believe in hope and miracles and and higher forces, and so I don't ever believe that there's no hope. There's always hope. Uh, so no matter how far gone someone is, I, I, I'm never going to say that they can't be helped. And don't let a doctor tell you that. Anyway, let me get off my soapbox. <laughs> get back to this. We're, 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 we're talking science now. So we've got this problem of chronic body inflammation, and our lymph is not exiting our body like it should. So we sit here and we try to figure out Okay, we've got to somehow make this lymph work better. Well, two of the major ways that lymph gets out of your system, well, actually, I'm just going to focus on the major way, is, is usually the kidneys. The kidneys are where you want to focus your attention, your adrenal glands, your kidneys, and, um, and obviously, if you have a fire in your body where you're creating nonstop acidosis and trash because you're eating a standard American diet with, uh, you know, cheeseburgers and, and fries when when you're eating this stuff it creates systemic inflammation and it takes especially if you've eaten this way for you know you're talking to someone that has Alzheimer's probably eating a crappy diet for 65 years you know it's going to take a few months to, to calm that inflammation down and I'm a big fan of uh, fasting people that have these inflammatory processes by taking away all food and just going to like a water fast or even dry fasting, uh, you start seeing results quickly because you stop throwing gasoline on the fire. So fasting these patients lets the kidneys start to clean house and catch up, especially dry fasting where you don't, you give the kidneys a break and you don't throw a bunch of water in them. You, you go a, a day without any food or water. Uh, that actually lets the kidneys throw off some acidosis and come out in the urine. And it's kind of like a placky mucus, waxy cast, all kinds of stuff comes out in the urine. And the kidneys start filtering the lymph better. Fasting is a great way to start because it costs no money. It's free. Um, now, obviously, when you're talking about someone with Alzheimer's, they're usually on a bag of medication and they're in a nursing home or something. Um you're going to have to find a doctor that safely fasts them through this and reduces their medication. Don't just go like <laughs> tell them because if they're on all these meds and you start fasting, them, you can really mess them up. So make sure you do that with someone that knows what they're doing. The other thing is um, the changing the diet. And there are some nursing homes. There's one in New Hampshire here that uh, feeds them mainly a vegetarian diet. And honestly, the least inflammatory thing you can feed them is fruit. Fruit cleanses the body. So especially citrus fruits. You want to start them out with a, a breakfast of a grapefruit, you know, something like that. Maybe an oranges, uh, some orange juice that's freshly squeezed. Don't go throw a bunch of sugar in it, just orange juice. That sort of thing. Um, fruits, put them on a fruit diet for a little while and you'll start noticing the inflammation coming out of their body and their brain will start working better. And it's pretty dramatic if you actually get strict about it and, and do it. Now, let's talk about um, another thing that a lot of people don't talk about. And that is, you have these things. Um, you don't remember I was showing you the towel tangles. So let me show you these. There's also these things that are called um, amyloids that, that float around your brain. And they're kind of like... Uh, trash proteins as well and they're also um, important to get out of your brain you don't want these things building up in your brain one of the big players um, that is almost never talked about 
is the atlas bone. Now the atlas bone is the top bone in your neck. And the reason I'm going to bring this up because I was a trained chiropractor and I saw patients with um, Alzheimer's and dementia get better after I adjusted them. And I was like, really? I didn't believe it, but I understand now the science behind it. So I get it better and I'll, I'll show you why. So let me um, show you. Here's a, here's a picture of a spine. Or, sorry, a model of a spine. The very Here's what you're looking at. This is the back of the skull. It's like been cut away. This is the top bone, the atlas, and the second bone, the axis. This junction's very unstable and gets pinched a lot. This yellow thing here represents your spinal cord. And that high up is actually part of your brain stem. Okay? And the red things are the blood vessels going in. So what happens is through a lifetime of bad posture, car wrecks, accidents, God knows, playing sports, whatever you did, for some reason these atlas bone gets knocked out of place and it chronically subluxates out of place. It gets stuck. So this thing gets stuck. And what happens when the atlas gets stuck uh, or that junction, that whole, it's a very unstable junction, that occipital atlanto uh, junction there is, is kind of messy. And one thing that happens is when this thing gets stuck, it stays stuck. And it's really hard to get back into place. It's not something your body normally can push back into place. What happens is that creates a compression on the spinal cord. And if that um, compression builds up enough, it blocks proper cerebrospinal fluid from going up. So let me show you what I'm talking about. It starts um, blocking this flow right so i think there's a good picture of that's what it actually looks like pulsing by the way but the atlas bone if can jam into this and pinch it so this flow gets disruptive and i want you guys to think of this like okay remember we were talking about the toilet the toilet's a good example you have fresh water pipe coming in and you have a waste pipe coming out Imagine I put a clamp on those two pipes and I started compressing it. So only half the water gets into the toilet and only half gets out. Over time, waste is going to build up in that toilet bowl. And because it's just not bringing enough fluid in and it's not taking enough fluid out. You understand that? that the actual physical compression of uh, making that not flow well. Uh, will cause a backup in your toilet. Well, the same thing happens in your brain. If you start pinching the brain stem so the cerebral spinal fluid can't get up and down through the brain like it's supposed to, and the glymphatic system can't drain out, you're going to start having a toxic pool of trash in your brain. And then you're going to start having things like towel, tangled fibers, and amyloids, and all kinds of bad stuff that's not supposed to be there. Uh, which will affect how your brain functions. So there's two reasons this can happen. There is a, a chemical reason, as in the lymph is not draining like it should because you eat a crappy diet. And then there is a um, mechanical reason where it's actually the bones out of place and not allowing this thing to flow. And most of the time it's a combination of both. So, there is some chiropractic techniques um, that are specifically upper cervical. So, not every chiropractor is trained in this area and are, are what I would say specialists or experts in this area and moving the atlas back correctly. Now, um, you will see, if you're looking for a chiropractor that knows how to do this, you will see guys advertise themselves as upper cervical specialist, or it'll say something like toggle technique, or atlas orthogonal technique, or nuca technique, or Blair technique. Um, I, I, you know, there, there's a couple. You want to call and say, are you an upper cervical specialist? That's the kind of chiropractor you need to find. Because what they found out, when I was talking to the guys that are doing the research on this, what they would do is they would actually adjust the atlas 
and then they would measure the amyloid flow and they would see that the amyloids were clearing out of the brain after an, a specific upper cervical adjustment. But they found out that like just a regular, you know, like rotary break and that kind of um, normal chiropractor didn't do it. It had to be a specialized atlas move to take the compression off that area, the brain stem. That it was, they weren't getting the same results with general chiropractic. They were only getting it with the upper cervical specific guys. So, um, if you don't know what I mean by that, like, like I did old school when I used to practice because I'm retired now pretty much. Uh, I used something called toggle technique, which you uh, lay the guy on, you know, a uh, this this is a speeder board, but you can use it. It's a toggle piece, and what happens is is the bone actually sets. Uh, I, I'll show you this better. So, one pretend uh, these are two bones, and one's jammed out of place. What happens is you use a table to use gravity to help you shear the bone loose, and it comes back into place where it's supposed to be. I use old school toggle. It still works. I mean, it is a good technique um, for problems like that. But there are guys that are really good at it, like the Nuka dudes. And there's even guys that use uh, specialized tools, and uh, and they will do some atlas setting with different kinds of tools. Just gotta shop around and find a chiropractor that knows what they're doing, because they are not equal. They're not made equal. <laughs> really take your time and find a chiropractor. What, if you put those two things together, you deal with the chemical side. Okay, we've gotta clean our diet up. I need to fast, I need to eat a lot more fruit. Stop eating inflammatory things, get off dairy, get off meat, get off oil. Don't take things that are inflammatory, okay? Don't smoke. Don't drink. None of that stuff. You've got to eat a really clean lifestyle um, to get this to reverse. Anything you put in inflammatory will make you go backwards. And you will notice when you are strict with these patients, they will start to turn back into them as old selves. And the day they step out there, well, I had some birthday cake and, you know, we went to the mall and now he can't remember who he is because he had a milkshake. You know, you will notice immediate reactions when you give them these things that uh, are highly inflammatory. Um, unfortunately, people don't like to hear that. They're like, oh, I can't get grandpa to eat fruit. You know, he's he's a meat potato guy his whole life. Well, that's why, you know, this is happening to his brain. This is a big part of it is you can't eat like that with no consequences. You can't have an acid-forming diet your entire life and be like, oh, why am I a victim of acidosis? You know, it's like, come on, guys. <laughs> You're, you eat your way into chronic conditions, and brain conditions are, are no different. They're just, it's finally so toxic it's got up into the brain. Um, You want to work on, like I said, uh, citrus fruits are, the, are usually the best fruits to clear, clear those pathways. Get your kidneys filtering right. Um... And you can look up uh, like kidney filtration. There's there's a good doctor, Doctor Morse on uh, on the internet. His stuff's really good. And you, I'll see if I can link a video or two to him. If you really want to dive into kidney filtration, uh, he's the guy to go to on that. But it, but honestly, I I fast. You want a quick result? Get a doctor to help you fast. Uh, your granddad or your grandma or or whatever. Now this also, like I said, I lumped in dementia, but. It, all these brain conditions are exacerbated by inflammation. So you can take someone with Parkinson's, Huntington's disease, all these diseases that are brain related, um, dementia, they're all going to get better when you take the constant inflammation out of the brain. Uh, there are a couple interesting things. Uh, you know, um, curcumin seems to somehow get across the brain barrier and calm the the inflammation down some but again the vitamins are good for a short term fix like you know the the turmeric or whatever but you really got to clean the diet up it's like you're just throwing gasoline on this fire in your body until you get strict with your diet this other stuff yeah you know you can get in there with a fire extinguisher for a day or two would take these vitamins and it helps but it's not really the long-term solution. The long-term solution is to stop eating this crap. I'm sorry, it's just the way it is. So hopefully you understand. I'm just gonna do a quick review. The brain um, is not draining properly because the body is so backed up with lymph, it's now in the brain. Uh, your lymph is backed up because 
this person has eaten a standard American diet for 65 years. The, um, the other thing that can happen is a mechanical blockage that the Atlas phone can get knocked out of place. And that could have happened 30 years, 40 years when they were a kid, they could have dropped out of a tree fort and, you know, fell on their head or something. The only people that are trained to move that bone back in are going to be upper cervical specialists that are chiropractors. Chiropractors are the only people who know how to do this. Um, find a good chiropractor and shop around. Make sure that they know what they're talking about. You can see a massive improvement. Because, like I said, it's kind of like that toilet. We put a clamp on the water in the sewage. Well, I can go in and clean that toilet. Like, I give you medicines and antibiotics and statins and all kinds of stuff to take anti-inflammatories. But I'm just going to keep cleaning this toilet because the sewage pipe is constricted. It's compressed. You know, it's it's a never-ending battle. Well, what about if I just took the compression off the sewer pipe? All of a sudden, the toilet will work, right? And people will be like, oh my gosh, it's a miracle. It's fixed. All you have to do is take the compression off that area, and the brain will start working right again. The amyloids will clear out, and um, and the, the glymphatic system will not be pinched and actually drain. So make sure you hit those two areas. I hope this helped. Again, this was something that um, I don't normally talk about health stuff really anymore. I, I have a few health stories, but I don't think I've done one in like a year or two. But this is something I keep getting dreams about. And my higher self is saying, hey, do this, do this, do this, do this. Someone needs to hear this. Someone needs to hear this. So one of you out there really needed to hear this message. If it's you, feel free to hit me up in the comments. But um the higher self won't shut up until I do this story. So it's like, here it is. So hopefully I've explained this and sorry if it went on a little long, but these concepts, um, just to be able to break it down at the end like that, I wanted to show you a little of the science of how it works. And really all chronic disease kind of works the same way is it's almost always you not getting rid of your lymph. And that sets up, a, you know, bad kidneys, bad lungs, bad organs, they're always in a, a lymph bath of acid. So take that for what it is. We're really not supposed to eat these kind of diets that we're raised with. And you kind of know that. I mean, really, come on now. <laughs> so sorry to be the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. But uh, that's the way it is. I can't change biochemistry. I appreciate you staying with me this long and listening. And if you found me over on one of these alternative networks, something like DTube or Steemit, maybe found me over at BitChute and Minds or Library Speech, I really appreciate you guys uh, supporting me on these alternative networks. And if this helped, eh, maybe toss me a little cryptocurrency. It'd be, it'd be nice. It'd be a nice way to say thank you. The other thing is, if you are still watching me over at YouTube, I uh, am trying to slowly move off YouTube. And you guys have heard me talk about this. This little icon here is the Patreon. So for just a dollar a month, you can support the show. And I'm getting more and more Patreons, which is helping me get off the YouTube uh, welfare money, the ad money. <laughs> I'd really like to break free of YouTube. And you can help me do that by uh, becoming a Patreon. But if you are going to watch YouTube, uh, again, I'm just happy to have you. And feel free to keep watching my stories. You can click on one of these other ones, and they'll take you to maybe another Hill story there. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you take this information and use it to help your loved ones.